Good morning. morning. We're back together again. Is this fun? Yay. Oh, and this is the best day. It's Friday. It's not any Friday. It's Fat Quarter Friday. Yay. This must be a hint. We probably need to have fat quarters for our pattern today, huh? That would be a good thing. So have all of you been gathering your fat quarters? So do you want to see the projects? I have to tell you, I didn't think this was going to be a cool pattern, and I found out I love it. Yes! Yes! It's so cool. It's a chisel, a chisel. And <laughs> Teresa kept on saying, what is a chisel? And so I brought one. This is not mine. You knew that. This is Brian's. He gave me a, a hum just a humongous chisel from the timber framer, so you can see what the end of a chisel looks like. Ah, you getting it, you getting it? If you're a timber framer, you use this chisel to just knock the bark off of the outside of trees. But if you've been around for a while, did you know that you can get a little chisel to cut out the holes in your buttonholes? Ah, ooh, and Teresa has one, but she forgot to bring it for me today. So you might have one. I'm going to put this away. But chisel block. Hmm. Do you want to see the quilts? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this one I love. And are you going to Are you going to go over there, Teresa? All right. All right. All right. I had envisioned another pattern and you did something different. Oh. So what do you think? Isn't it good? It's really cool, and you see, first of all, you see the, the dark stars, mm -hmm. but then when you look, then all of a sudden you see the light stars throughout there. And it's just really fun. At first, the block is kind of scary looking. I get scared easily. <laughs> but it looks kind of scary with these little points out there, but then all of a sudden they make a secondary patch right in there. And this one is just really 12 blocks. It was just so much fun to do. And it's three across, four down. It's all scrappy. You've been getting your fat quarters. There are um, 12 dark or medium fat quarters. And there are six background fat quarters. Can you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. This, is, this is the easy thing. It's all based on 12, six and 12. Six, 12. 18, 24. <laughs> See if we can do this without our calculators, huh? So it's just really fun. And then just two simple borders, a two and a half inch and a five and a half inch around the outside. And the back is just really fun to do. Just straight. Oh, well, let's see if I can do it with my gimpy arm, huh? So that one, that one's the first pattern. This is the one I'm going to show you first, the star. Okay, you want to see the second one? Yeah. Okay, so the star. Teresa's going to hang it up. This one is going to go on forever. Are you ready? <laughs> this is a table runner. I have a really long table. It must be about 12 feet long. And this is going to fit perfect for it. But if you don't have a table this size, you can make it half the size, right? Or if you have a really small table, you can make it one-fourth the size. It's really fun. Now, in this one, it's basically the medium and the dark. Mm -hmm. But you can put some light in there. It kind of adds some sparkle, don't you think? Mm -hmm. It just really adds sparkle and lots of fun. Well, this is with the chisel die uh, from AccuQuilt. But I have to show you the braid quilt that I've been sleeping under all winter. You want to see that one? Yeah. Okay, this one I made before I had the AccuQuilt. So this was just with my own pattern and my own little template. I had to cut all these little things. Okay, Teresa, this is huge. But this is my favorite. Wow. wow. Oh, I can really... Can I, what can I get out in front? Yeah. So, of course, I love the red, white, and blue. And 
and this was just so much fun. It's a king size quilt. I have a king size bed, and it's really just like six little table runners all lined up as long as my bed <laughs> and a little couple of little borders in between. But I just, I fell in love with this print. This was my inspiration print. And from this inspiration, all of those just went along. My cleaning lady loves this. And she says, would you make me one of these? And I said, I'll teach you how to make your own. So I think it would be really fun. But anyhow, this is the king size braid, which is really a skinny chisel. And it's just really fun to do. Okay, so take it away. Are they beautiful? They are so beautiful. I know. I love them. Okay, you want to see all, see all your fabric and all of your pieces? Sound good? Okay, so the first thing on the cover, I do want you to know that this is Go Baby Friendly. That means that the dyes that you're going to use are skinny enough to put inside your Go Baby. And whenever I was working on my new book, I wrote how when I first hurt my arm, I could just barely turn the Go, the Go Baby. And then I worked up to the Go. And in my introduction, and then I said, and now there's the Go Big. And I occasionally treat myself, those are my exact words, occasionally treat myself and Sue read my intro to proof it. She said, what's this occasionally? <laughs> so I had to go back and cross off the word and say, OK, I love the go big. But anyhow, if you only have the go baby, you can do this. Good? OK, so let's look and see. There's the two projects that you see right in the beginning. The two dies that you're going to be using. First is this one, the chisels. This one, the chisels, it's 55039, and you need to have a mat the same size. And when you do the stars, you need to have a second die, and it's this one, it's 55009. But if you've been working with the mix and match, this is number three on the mix and match, the six inch mix and match. So you only need to have one die, and you just got it today. Twice. Oh, you could give me one back. That would be really cool. And you need to have the mats the same size. So it works really good. OK, so let's turn the page. Beep. Ooh, you need to have how many of the medium to dark back quarters? Twelve. Twelve. Look at this. This is so good. You know what I said to Teresa? had to use my whiny voice. Would you run out to the store and get me 12 fat quarters that go together? And this is what she found. Aren't they beautiful? So just there's like um, browns, beautiful, different textures, greens, a couple of colors of green, a black just for impact, intensity, and then there's the reds. But see, they're all different little patterns. They all look like they're going to go great together. I love it. I'm so glad she got me those. And then you need to have six backgrounds, and they should be of similar value. They're all kind of similar, but they all have a little different texture in them, a little different color, and they look really good. All right, so how many layers are you supposed to cut on the go? Six. Six. <laughs> Who said six? Y'all said six. I heard a different answer. I don't know. So I heard something else. OK, so what would be really smart, I'm going to stack up six for Teresa. So let's just take a little bit of everything. Wouldn't that be good to kind of like pre-line this thing up like this? Is this good? Let me see. One, two, three, whoop, four, five. Six? Is that good? Yeah. Six? OK, so all you're going to do is open up your fat quarters, stack them up, put the salvage at the top, 
or at the bottom on the outside edge, so you have like 22 inches along here. You're going to stack all six up, and then you're going to press them all together. All right, and guess what Teresa said she's going to do? She's going to do all of that. She said she's going to do it really fast. <laughs> so while well, she... No pressure, Teresa. No, no pressure. Okay, so do you want to hear the good news? Yeah. yeah. I have converted Teresa to loving the go. <laughs> she, she was like also cold on it. You know, she likes everything perfect. And she, okay, I'll, I'll do it on the go. And then I had to work on my book and get all my blocks done. And so I was in my office and Teresa yells from the sewing room into my office, Elle, I'm never gonna rotary cut strips again. <laughs> that was Teresa? That was Teresa, isn't that shocking? And she also um, has her big quilt hanging out in the Quilt in the Day store. It's really fun to see. It's um, all of the mix and match blocks. It's coming out in my new book on July 2nd. July 2nd. You know what's July 2nd? What's it's my birthday! <laughs> I'm having a birthday party. So we just went to Zoe's party. Zoe was three, and every time Zip, everybody said, okay, Zoe, how old are you? And she had to work with her fingers, and she worked, and, and then she get them all three up, she go, three! <laughs> the youngest baby is three. Ellie's going to be eight. Oh. Third grade. And I'm going to be 70! <laughs> I can't believe that. 70's the new 40. Is that what it is? Thank you. 70's the new 40. Cool. Embrace it. Embrace it. I guess it's just as old as you feel. People have been telling me that forever. Okay, so Teresa has one set of six of the medium to dark. I have six of my background all stacked up. And you press it all together. How you doing over there, Teresa? Oh, you want to cut it here or where? You're going to cut it over here. <laughs> I'm just not sure if my gimpy arm can do it. Can you do six layers of fabric at once? No. Mm -hmm. No? Yeah. yeah? No? On this one. Okay, you got to press that one next. Okay. Okay. So the good thing is, is that all of these um, pieces can be four inches wide. Four inches wide. And so I recommend that you just stack them all up like this, get them all pressed, and then cut four inch pieces. Okay. And she's a lefty, so I've got to move out of the way. <laughs> so she, I, you, you can straighten. You don't actually need to have a straight edge, so that's cool. Cool. You go, Teresa. Can I have this one? Yeah, sure. See, this is just so much fun. <laughs> we got to just do a little stripping here and get rid of it. Okay. So one set of four. So... If you can't layer cut six, just do them in groups of three. I bet you can do groups of three, huh? Okay, she's got just two more, and then there'll be a little bit along the edge. Yes? Um, Teresa always does. She always does, and I hardly ever do. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't use the big one. Okay, so this is what's left. And you can save this, piece it together, and make this little. No, I won't. I'm going to put it on my shelf. People always write me and ask if they can have my scraps, but actually I really end up using them. Okay, so now, Teresa, we have to do a little bit more cutting. I want you to look at your picture and see how it says... Then you cut these into 4 inch by 11 inch. Let's see if I can just turn it around. Can you do it this way? Yeah, okay, I'll line it up this way. And 
I wanted to set some aside for the braid. So don't cut at least one of them. Do you see there's not a line through one of them, of each of the colors? That's the six in the stack, just set it aside. But um, for convenience, they're all gonna be cut four inches by 11 inches, okay? Ooh. Oh, look cool. this all we have here. Oh, this is all you have? Sorry, it's right here. Oops, a See. little. That would be much better. Sorry. Oops. So she's gonna. So I see what I did. I lined it up at zero, so you cut it eleven. Oh, but that's okay. Zero? I see. I'm that's sorry. okay. That's it. Yep. Okay, that's good. And you see how it shows in your pattern. You're gonna cut all three sets. You have two sets of this, and you have one set of background. And you're just gonna cut them all into four inch strips and then into 11 inch. Okay, good? So, and then I would just take them, and I just showed how to criss crisscross fold them. Just take them like this, so you don't have such a big group. And this, I'm gonna set aside for the braid. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay, there's the braid over there. Don't let me forget, and we can use this too. And this has to be folded and pressed exactly the same. So we're gonna keep Teresa busy. She's worth her um, weight in gold, huh? Okay, so now it shows you what you can do if you want to just make one star. Anybody want to just try out one star? It says that you can go ahead and do it with how many 11-inch um, strips. Okay, I need one of my stars. I want to show that. Let me see. Cool. How about that? Isn't it weird looking? So, this is one star. When you look at it, there are four dark chisels. And at the end of the four dark, are light triangles. So there's four light triangles. And then we don't see the background star yet, but still now there's four light chisels, four background chisels. And the light background chisels all have, what color triangle on the end? Dark, dark. So it's, it's really easy to do. This is basically the patch that we're going to be making four of. A dark chisel with light and a light chisel with dark. What did you say? I thank you. <laughs> I wanted to hear that. So anyhow, if you just want to make only one block just to try it out, find out how it goes. There it tells you that you basically need to have four inch by 11 inch strips because that's what we're gonna cut right now on our dies. Yeah, you cut that one because I really want that one too. And so down underneath, if you wanna do 12 stars, 12 stars, you need to have a total of 48. Four darks times 12 is 48. Yeah. And so then you need to have background chisels. You need 48 of those. So you need to have, you need to have four stacks to make those. And then whenever you do the dark, the dark squares, you need to have 48 again. And the light half square is 48. It's all based on 48. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So this is what I'm going to do. Teresa is really getting busy cutting me. So I'm going to take, I really need background and dark. This is going to be background chisels and dark, right? Mm -hmm. Background and dark triangles. Okay, so now I'm going to get my chisel. 
this one right here, and there's two on two chisels on there. So now, oh, this is the math. I have six here. I'm going to cut two of them. Uh, so how many am I going to get? Five. Six times two is 12 perfect chisels, just like that. So I'm going to line it up, line up the stack of six, because that's the ideal number. Put it straight with the um, edge of the die. Get a mat that matches. Put it right on top. Pardon me? They are all right side up. <coughs> That's the most important thing. Remember we stack these all right side up? Everything's right side up. And I think I wrote that at least a hundred times. <laughs> they come out mirror image. Okay. Not to confuse you. Your stars are all right side up. Your braid is mirror image, so it's wrong sides together. But that, that says it clearly in here. Okay, now this is, this is your trick question. Here I have four half square triangles. I have six in my stack. Six times four is 24. You guys are so good, you don't need a calculator. <laughs> you know that they've been doing studies. Okay, so now get this all lined up. And you'll have a little bit extra on the end of this one, but you can use it for jumper scraps <coughs> or whatever. Okay, so now get a mat the same size and put it right on there. So I think I'm showing off. <laughs> and why not? Why not? Why not? Because you can do both of these with your go. At the same time with the go big. Okay, ready? It's turned on. And just go. What's that? And I thought, I got all worried. Okay, it's going to fall off. You know, what am I going to do? Okay, so slide the mat. Whoops, I lost two anyways. Slide it off. Take all the extra stuff. And you know what I've been doing? I've been cutting off this little stuff right here, getting rid of it, and I've been keeping this big old hunk. I mean, look, we could do something with this, couldn't we? Why not? One inch squares. Oh my gosh, that could be so cute. Okay, dog beds. <laughs> oh, that, that extra piece, this piece in the border. Yeah, it would be really, really cute. Okay, so this is my um, triangles. I need to have how many darks for one star? Four. Four. Thank heavens these numbers are easy, huh? And let me get this one. Okay, there were two, two all right side up. I did six layers, so how many do I have right here? Two times six is twelve. This is like, you know, like the farm wife had to know the dozens, right? The dozen eggs, the dozen chickens. Okay, so I really like this one. This is good. Okay, and, and you have some more ready, too? I think we have enough. Teresa, why don't you do um, a set of this dark, okay? White. And the white. So we'll have both stacks. Okay, dark. Dark chisels, we need dark chisels, and she's going to do one of the white. So you know that you have to do twice as many chisels as you do triangles, because one does two, chisel does two, triangles do four. And that's why it says on your little chart, the chisels, you do four stacks of both of them. And on the half square triangles, you only do half as many, two. <laughs> Are you with me? I was like, oh my gosh, that's a lot to think about. So look, I'm going to do this. And this is so cool. I like having an assistant. 
Do you know I wrote down that in my book that when you use the AccuQuilt, you will have so many more pieces cut than you could ever possibly sew. Isn't that true? Okay, so it's going to look like this. This is what you have, right? Opposites. And to make this star quilt, you need to have 48 and 48 of each one of them. Okay, so you can take the, take the dies. Good. Teresa's supposed to keep my table clean. Good. Let me see. We're doing good. Okay, so we got everything cut. And now I just want to show you something that I learned that um, I finally got accurate. And I want to show you how I got accurate. First of all, it's easy to um, jam your pieces in your sewing machine as they go through. So it really helps if you put a single whole throat plate right there. A single whole throat plate, and that's a picture. Because that way your little dog-eared ends, see right here, the little dog-eared ends, won't go in your single whole throat plate. I use a quarter inch foot. It's from the needle to the edge, <coughs> it's always a quarter. And now I found out that the so straight from quilt in a day really helps me because this is how you're supposed to sew. You're supposed to sew a quarter of an inch seam from this little end here, a quarter of an inch from here down to here. And I found that I was always getting a little wonky by the time I got to the end. So I found out if you put this on your machine, which I'll do it right away in a minute, and you line it up like this. Look, there's a little point right there. It says put the point right there. We made this just for AccuQuilt. And do you see if you start sewing here? Do, 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 do. And as you slide it up, you keep this lined up with the edge. So you have a perfect quarter of an inch. So you're supposed to make the amazement noise. Oh. Ooh! You're going, I've been, why have I not known about this, huh? Because I think Orion just designed it. Did you just design that, Orion? Oh, no, the woman yes, the woman passed. Okay, so now I don't have, watch my, watch my Aria. I'm going to thread my needle if I'm good. Oh, your tongue gets right. Push the button. Yes! Isn't that cool? See, you always worry. I figured by 70 I'm not going to be able to see very well. And I'm thinking I'm going to have to have Orion go through and thread all my needles until Baby Lock came out with these really cool things. Okay, inside the uh, So Straight, there's this little... Um, double stick tape. You can, you can actually, yeah, I was trying to show the wrong side. You can actually put this double stick tape on the back, remove it from your sewing machine, put the little cover on the double stick take, tape, and when it gets dirty, you just wash the double stick tape and it'll stay down. So it says right here, line this up with the needle right here, right? You don't cover your feed dogs. That wouldn't work very good, would it? You don't cover your feed dogs. But you just line it up like this. Now, all I'm going to do, you just take the triangle, flip it right sides together to the chisel, and is that a good color on the table? Can you see that? So see that edge right there, that dog-eared edge? Sally Murray taught us to call it engineered corner, but AccuQuilt calls it dog ears. So there and there, they just line up perfect. No trying to figure out how much tip to let hang out. You just line up those things. Line them up. And I do love my stiletto. Okay, so you just pick it up. And line up the line on the um, sew straight. And where's one of my little scraps? I 
I just love to have a little jumper scrap because I hate it when these little corners go right into my uh, feed dogs. Don't you? Yeah, I you can, Brenda. What do you want to know? Uh huh. Okay, this one says place needle at edge. That's the center. This is for a quarter inch this way or for a quarter inch the other way. Ooh, ah, amazing. I honestly, I use this first for my uh, photographs for my books, and I wanted to make a bad looking one so I could show what a bad looking one looked like. And I didn't get any bad ones. <laughs> that was the best thing. Okay, so now I'm just going to pick up the second one. And because I just kind of did six, six different fabrics all right side up, you just pick it up and you just put the next one right behind. Okay, so what are you thinking? This is looking pretty easy, huh? <laughs> oh, I know. And if they don't get started right, you can see how I just kind of pulled on the end just to go through there. Okay, so I'm going to do four of the background chisel and four dark to medium triangles, right? And this is going to make one block. Okay, how many do I have? Three, one, two, three... Okay, I'll just do a fourth one. See, this way, if you use different stacks and with all different fabrics, see, I'm not thinking real hard right now. Is that good? That's very good. Yeah, we don't want to think too hard on this. Okay, so just... Well, you know, didn't you read the statistics? I'm so excited. They actually said in the statistics that um, if you... Keep your mind active. Specifically, they mention quilting. <coughs> that you, you won't get um, dementia, Alzheimer's. Keep your mind active with your math. So, 4 times 12 is? 48. And that's how many you need, right, of each piece. Okay, so now I'm going for the alternate one. These pieces are all right side up. <coughs> background and every one you make four of the first set and now just pick up and do four of the second set Ooh, I might have lots of red red is good but I find it to be really true to keep your keep you busy keep you thinking <coughs> oh okay well uh, okay, okay, watch this, Brenda. Okay, I got it lined up here. And do you see how this is a diagonal line and my edge of my fabric is a diagonal line? And just think if you had a square, a big square, you could be using both sides of the diagonal line as you feed this through here. Okay, watch. I'm... I probably am focusing more on this right here, but that should also, if you get a little off, you just stop. You Okay, there's my diagonal line. I'm going to just line it up there. It's, it is really cool, honestly. You know, um, I get you get gadgets and stuff, and you just go, I don't know. You know, it's okay if you just have it or you don't. But when I found out that I really needed this for my AccuQuilt, I was very excited. I'm just constantly keeping my eye right here on this line. That corner, that dog-eared, and right there. I'm sorry to give you something else to buy today. That's okay when I give you that one guy back. Yes, there you go. She said she's giving her one die back because she bought the combination set of the two, of the chisel and the um, triangle square. And um, she didn't know that she did just purchased it earlier that morning. Okay, so hold your tongue. Okay, 
I'm just totally jamming. That gives new meaning to jamming. I'm gonna get my little, um, my little foot. I'm all caught up in my cute little scissors and my cute little scraps, and they're just in my way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did they drop on the floor? They dropped on the floor. Okay, so see, I just really did get a little stuck. So I'm just going to do my jumper scrap again. And how many of the darks have I done, Teresa? Um, one, two, three, four, five. You might do one, two, three, four, five. Do more? Uh, Okay, I have lots of, see how easy it is? You can just sit here and mindlessly sew. That's what I like. Okay, so I think I have enough here. I have enough. Okay, so now Teresa, wait, wait, wait. We're not telling everybody. Now the camera has to go on Teresa. Okay, you set the seam, it's very convenient. You have your triangle on top, you set the seam with the triangle on the top. Okay, set the seam with the triangle on the top. Open and press toward the triangle. It doesn't matter if it's a light triangle or a dark triangle. Just press toward the triangle. And see, what this is what I love to do, what she's doing. You just take the whole stack of them and just uh, set real fast. Do, 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 do. This is how you get stuff done in a day. Do, 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 do. Very easy. Um, if you watch in my patterns, what I really like to do is, okay, and these, and you're supposed to keep me neat and tidy. <laughs> okay, so this is it. What do you think? That was good, huh? Very nice. Okay, so now we're going to do what I call the quarter block. And if you just take four of them, stack them up. Oh, well, to make one block. Four. But if you're going to make all 12, how many do you need in a stack? 48. Okay, so this one goes up and down, and this one gets turned around. Oops. I need the light. Ah! I'm going, ooh, this doesn't look right. One, two, three, four. And there's the opposite. How's that? Does that look good? Okay, but let's put this one. Let's don't put black and black together. Is that better? Yeah. More better. Okay, so four of these make one block. We're doing so good, aren't we? Are we doing good? I haven't looked at the time. Okay, so let's flip this right sides together. And now, again, you can still just use your little sew straight and get that all lined up. And it is still that quarter inch seam. Pardon me? Oh, I still didn't hear what Orion said. 10.39. Oh, my gosh. We got to get this rolling. Pedal to the metal. Okay, now you look again. Now on this one, green, red. That looks good, huh? Yeah. Not, the same. Not the same. Not the same. So you want to make them all different. Just toss them over. Get another one. Don't want to make it all the same for variety. I'll show you one star that we did. Okay, one more going through. Okay, what do you think? Brown and brown? No. Yeah, let's try that. Yep, yeah. yeah. is that better? Yeah. That's cool. I like all these little prints. I have so many prints that I could make a king size, or maybe one that would cover my house. <laughs> I just cut so many pieces. It was just so much fun. I just really loved it. Okay, and uh, if they don't line up on the ends, I just use my stiletto. Okay, and now this is going to be the rule. This is good. We ended up good. Green and brown. 
right sides together. All right, so Teresa, you want to cut these off and turn them over with the dark chisel on the top. Okay, turn up. So the dark chisel is on the top. Set the seam with the dark chisel on the top. Open and press toward the dark chisel. Cool. Beautiful, beautiful. Ta-da! Okay, so now, this is why you see, if you look, why you need to turn them all right side up, because see, every chisel is going in the same direction. Right side up. Okay, so I'm just going to put this one right, but then whenever you lay it out, you just swing it around. Just swing it around, baby. Oh, my gosh. This I, I really, I lucked out. Is that cute? Okay, you know what I'm going to do. Okay, so now you get out your value glasses. And to me, the, your red glasses, and to me, these look like they're the darkest. And those are medium. And these are side by side. Is that better? Yes. And then the, then it's not beside each other. Cool. All right. Turn the page. Beep. So what do you think? Easy. Easy, huh? Okay, so now you're just going to go do, 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 right? Do, 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 right down there. Oh, and Teresa, yeah. I have some blocks. Yeah. If you would like to go ahead and take that off the, take the finished one off the uh, wall, off the design wall. And um, I'm going to talk about placement. Because in my blocks that I did, I love red, and I think that it showed up. This is really interesting. There's nothing to lock here. And I didn't even worry about matching anything. It's truly amazing. It's, it's so fun. Now you don't have to really work hard to get, get it to look right. Here, I'll open it up and show you. Ooh, can you see that? Do you have the camera? No. No squaring up. Let's think of all the great things with AccuQuilt. No squaring up. No pinning. No hanging out your tips or cutting off your tips, whatever you want to do. OK, so this is something that I realized. OK, I'm going to just tell you what I'm going to do, and then I'm going to tell Teresa. Okay, so I have a connecting thread here. You don't cut your connecting thread because we're going to do our magical swirling. We're going to flip it right sides together. We're going to push the seam on the top up and the seam underneath down. Okay, that's our magical swirling so that the center lays really flat. We do it a lot. We all the time. All the time. And it just makes it really good. And there, the stitches do not come out because you've anchored them with another row of stitching over it. I have never had my stitches come out. OK, so Teresa, it was really interesting that when I laid out my blocks, I had a dominant red in each one. Can you see? Can you see a dominant red in each block? OK, so this is what I found out. This one, if it goes up, I turn this one to the side, pointing to the right. Can you take it and, and turn that one and put that one up there? OK, and I make sure, OK, well, OK, this is nothing. And then I put this one down. And then I put that one to the, the other left. Take that one and turn to the left. But I don't want it to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I just thought that it kind of spread out the reds. It helps, doesn't it? So that you can just really get it. OK. I think you made the, the first six dominant dark. Uh-huh. 
Yes. Right. And should Joe, should Joe have blocked it or that combination, or would you now mix You mix them up. up. You don't have to mix them up, but that is, that is exactly right. You have stacks of the first medium dark, and you have stacks of the second medium dark. If you take two from the first set and two from the second set and just mix them up, then you have lots of variety. And in the end, you don't want to have anything sitting next to each other. Ah, you're shaking your head. You get it. Yeah, really good. Yeah, but it's so easy when you work in groups of six. Okay, this is how we're going to swirl if you've never swirled before. Ooh, I have this perfect little loop. Is Sue close? Mm -hmm. Okay, just take your scissors. That's my connecting thread that I didn't cut, and you just cut that. And then I just take my stiletto, put my finger right here at the seam that goes across. Oh, I am in luck today. And you just unsew there, and then you turn it over. You put your finger nail right at the bottom of that. This, that's the horizontal seam. I'm just picking out about a quarter of an inch of a vertical seam and just pick it out and then this is magic when you lay it wrong side up you just swirl clockwise this goes down to the right just make like a circle and whenever you go around the circle whoop, it kind of opens up that center into a little four patch and it looks like i have one more little thread i have to pick out and that'll really lay that open. Okay, so can you see? You put your finger right there and you go, mush it! And make it very flat. Oh, now you can really see it. <laughs> Makes it flat. And the second thing is, when you put these blocks together, because they swirled, Every seam is going to go in the opposite direction, so you can just lock them together. Yay! Woo! So isn't that star fun? I, I just love that star. I think it's really cool. And now the braid. Oh, and there's beautiful quilting in your pattern, so you can go ahead and see. Okay, so... Teresa, do you have the braids? Let's see. Okay. 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 So let me take this one and give me an 11, a 4 by 11 inch, too. Okay. So let's get rid of this one because that one's all done. Yes, right. I won't forget. Wrong size together. We'll just start with this, lo this one, okay? Just so you see the difference, all right? So, remember we turned them all right side up for the star, but now they're mirror image. So, you have to put them wrong sides together. You have to put these pairs wrong sides together. So, now they're going to be mirror image. Okay, Teresa, you want to come and cut, mm -hmm. cut this one for me? No triangles in the braid, no triangles, just the braid. And since you can cut six layers, it's like three pairs. They're all wrong sides together, okay? And so you can finish off this stack right here. Just turn them, anything you have. I find out more is better. <laughs> it's okay. I'll turn it around. We'll turn it around. We'll just cut these. Um, because, you know what, the more scrappy, is the easier it is to put it together. Okay, so um, these are all pairs. Okay, actually what would have been really good, this is good, Nancy. Um, we never cut the third set, but it would have been good to have a couple of these right now. Okay, and you want to take that and you can cut it. See how I get so many? If you have a whole strip, it's easy. Just put it wrong sides together. 
And you can just take anything you have left and cut it up. And give lots of table runners for Christmas gifts. <laughs> yeah, it's very easy. And the reason that I really like this as a table runner is because it's narrow. You know how you get everybody sitting at the table? And you have so... You just you don't want your table runner taking up the whole table space. It's really nice. It's only 14 inches. Okay, so we got lots of them. So what I'm going to do, let me see. These are the same. We don't have a lot of variety here because we should have cut from the second set too, right? And if you don't want to, if you don't want to, I. Uh, you don't um, need to put your background in here. Okay, look, I'm getting lots of them. One, two, and there should be like a third set. But it's too, it's okay. We have plenty to show the technique, right? Okay, so we got lots of them. Oh, here's one more set. Cut me one more of those and then they'll all be different. Okay, so now... We're going to take them, and you have to take them and look at the picture right here. So when you start opening them up, it goes like that. Okay, you put one there and one with there. Mirror image, right? One there, one there. And you just keep on stacking them up. Oops. And it doesn't matter if they're not good colors. We'll mix them up. So make a whole stack. And this is really fun, too. I really enjoy doing this. Ta-da! Okay, make just big stacks. No triangles. Okay, now take. This is going to be the left stack. Thinking again. Man, I remember when I got married, the preacher said, put out your right hand. And I'm going. <laughs> the other left. The other left. Oh, yes, there's, yeah. Okay, so anyhow, which is your left hand? Let me see. Good. Which is your right hand? Which is your left stack? Which is your right stack? Good. Okay, so just take one from the left, and it even says right up at the top of page 17. There's a left, and I'm going to put it like that. And then it says take a right. So this is the left, that's the right. Yep. Little flippy arrow. I love our flippy arrows. Go right. Right sides together. Does this look like your picture? Okay, so just go ahead and go. How are we doing time-wise? Pretty good? Five minutes? Eight minutes? Okay, so you only have to sew halfway down, and this is my bottom. And cut your threads. And now the rule is you press your seam towards the one you just added. So I would say this was on the top. So you open and you press, you can just finger press. Finger press your seam toward the one that was just added. Okay, so now this is my bottom. Okay, how about this one on the left? Is that good? Okay, flip it right sides together, line it up at the top, and you just let about it's like a little fourth of an inch tip right there hanging out at the bottom. Can you see that? Yeah. Yep. Oh, even the video. Good job, Sue. Okay, this is left. And just sew it along. Um, Teresa, I have my, um, let me see, my other pieces. Ooh, 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 ooh. Let me see. 
Ah, look at that. Okay, you have to have that all ready. Okay, cut your threads. Okay, we'll wait. Don't press it yet. Okay, press the seam toward the one that you added, just added. So I just added my round. Best to use fingers. Okay, now this would actually be fine right here. This is from my right because I like to do like a dominant color. Left, right, left, right. So they're not, you know, all lined up the same. Okay, so I'm just going to put this one, line it up at the top, and put the foot down. Okay, I'm working from the bottom up. You just have this little bit sticking out right at the bottom, just about a quarter of an inch. Okay, what's the rule? Yeah. Doo -doo. Okay, and ah, this is good too. How did I get so lucky? <laughs> so that was right. Now this is left. Flip it right sides together. Is this what you thought we were going to do, Brenda? Yeah, but no, I, I like the way it looks so cool. Yeah, me too. I, I really think it's cool. Okay, a little bit of a tip hanging out. All right, you guys got the idea? Yeah. Easy. Okay, now. So you can see, here you go, and you have to finish up on the right side. You have to finish up on the right side. Let me see which would be a good color to put on the right side. Okay, I just want to show you something. So it's supposed to be the right side, so you will know right away if you try to do that. That doesn't work, right? right. That's a left. Okay, so... This is, I didn't want to do too green, but I have to cut more pieces. So, <coughs> this is what you have, and now you count your pairs. You want to find out how long, if you want to have a medium length, you look on page 19, you need 12 pairs. And this is a pair. One, two. One pair. One, two, three. But you just put it against your table or wherever you want, and you stop when you want to, or you keep on going when you want to. Okay, so now Teresa has, hold up your braids. Ta-da! Turn it around on the front. Okay, so you lay it flat on your pressing mat, and it says you press your seams to the bottom of the braid. Do you see the bottom hanging over in the end? Mm -hmm. Okay, you just cut the bottom. Doop. And it's, it's ma amazing how you don't have to fight your seams. That's what's so great. You don't have to fight your seams at all. Did I say, did I say it wrong? No, toward the left? No, it says press away from. Oh, you guys didn't read the bold words. It says in bold. Brenda, why didn't you read that and tell me? Press away from the chisel, just added in bold. I was thinking I should really look that up. And you know what? I'm glad I wrote it down. Okay, so it just when you, if this is the bottom, when you press, you just go, if you pressed away from the chisel, just add. And why didn't you tell me that, Madeline? I thought you were watching, huh? Okay, you were just believing everything I said. Okay. All right, so now turn the page. Whoop. So now we got to make this square, and you're going to love this, okay? You're going to lay it out, and you're going to go to the bottom. Go to the bottom where we started, and you're going to just take your rotary cutter and your ruler, and I'm just going to lay it straight on there. 
lay straight on the lines and I'm just going to go right here like this and I have a line I'm cutting a straight line right across the bottom and I'm just going to go like that cut these two guys off here now it's straight you're going to love this I'm going to pull it down I'm going to take the big one and I'm going to ah and put that one right there and this one goes right up there. Is that good? Isn't that amazing? Good. So impressed. And so now, let's see. You, now you're just going to go ahead and add your borders. There's like little narrow borders. Let's see. I just thought maybe this one might be fun. These were from the, the ends. Or you could do this one add borders to both sides what do you think maybe red yeah. we probably need red yeah. just so your borders on there layer it quilt it bind it and you're done yay the chisel the chisel oh my gosh ah chisel so you can get the two dies but look what you can get on July 2nd, my birthday. We're doing a big rollout with AccuQuilt and my 70th birthday. They so, can get it right now. Oh, they can? You got 15,000 in yesterday. I got 15,000 in yesterday. I thought we were supposed to roll it out, Orion. It's um, <laughs> 1995. This is for the 6 and the 9-inch mix and match blocks. I wrote it. I did it. It's really cool. It's full of my uh, students' quilts, plus it tells you how to make, I think it's 34 blocks. Go Sampler! Thank you.